the Turnigy evolution to take multi-protocol modules. I finally did it. And let me show you. It's not really the cleanest execution just yet. And that's the reason why I didn't upload the video. Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today I'm gonna do an update video on a couple quadcopters, couple components that I have come to love and some of my favorite quadcopters and some new modifications that I've done recently, which I'll be taking out tomorrow and after tomorrow. Now, first let's start with something that happened the other day, which is we rebuilt the uh, Eosheen Wizard HV. Completely redone this with the Foxier Mix, the new Eosheen VTX with DVR, uh, what do we use? The T motor F45 amp ESCs and everything. And as you can tell now, I have different motors. Uh, these are the F60 uh, V3 Multi GP Edition. I, I I love these motors, and there's another motors that I love. But the re you might be like, okay, well, why did you change it? You never even tested them out. Well, I actually did, and I'm gonna show you the footage right now. I just kept flipping backwards. So it was motor three. And then when I brought it back home and I took a closer look, I saw that actually motor three was burned or it was starting to burn here, but it didn't even feel hot. I mean, let me see if I could show you this. So this has nothing to do with the motors, I think. I don't know what the hell it has to do with, to be honest. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit, uh, but it could be because of the ESCs. You can tell it's really disgusting right there, that blue black part. That's the coating on the coils and that's just basically melted. Uh, there's another motor that looked the same also. Most of them really just started to burn somewhat. So I just decided to remove them and later on probably just buy some because they're really cheap anyways. And to test them out, it's, it's really a shame. I mean, it was a really nice motor with, you know, no C-clips. And um, it, it, it looked like it was going to be a really great motor. The gap is really minimal. But yeah, just my luck, you know, this, this shit happens sometimes. So this is basically not even an Eosheen Wizard HV anymore. It's just the frame. And to be honest, I am loving the frame. Um, so far, I mean, the way, it how it fits everything. So yeah, so now we're running the T-Motor F60s. Which KV is this? These are the T-Motors 2500 KV, the T-Motor 3 Multi-GP Edition. These are my favorite T-Motors, even though they're the ugliest T-Motor motors, but these are just insane. Uh, last time I had these were on this diatone that I built with the Racer Star, Star F4S. Believe it or not, they're still functioning really great. You'd be like, okay, well, why aren't you using it anymore? Well, it's because of the frame really pissed me off. The, uh, the aluminum was really crappy. This is a really older frame. And um, yeah, I just started to do this and it really pissed me off and I just didn't want to use it anymore. And that's why I just took it off. So I just decided to put them here because I don't want them to go to waste because they're really, really good motors. I'll have a link to this build and as well as the components I used for this one down below. We'll be testing this out hopefully tomorrow. I'm taking all these out anyways tomorrow and after tomorrow. Now I'm also going to do an update on the Hollybro Copus 2. So I actually have two of these guys and it is my, I would say, most trusted daily driver. Um, I did break an arm, uh, but I went ahead and purchased some more. Obviously, the arms will break. It's really light, really nimble, very efficient. I was getting five minutes and fifty sec, uh, five minutes and fifty seconds of flight times at time when I'm just cruising, doing my little uh, action camera review. This is a 3D printed part TPU I designed for the Hollybro Copus. You can find it on my uh, Thingiverse. Just look at Drone Mesh Thingiverse, and you'll find. It. I usually post some stuff there. Not always everything makes the video. So yeah, if you want to check that out. So I'll have a link to this one down below. It's an amazing little beast. It's insane. Um, I have two of them, and these are the ones I trust the most. So if I'm gonna go out flying, and um, I just you know I don't know the new, it's a new location. This is what I grab because I just have the most trust in this one. So yeah, this one has a lot of uh, flight time on this, and uh, it's the one that I really trust the most. So I really love this one, and that's why I have it as my action camera tester because it's just always so uh, what do you want to say reliable and consistent in the way it flies. It never does anything weird, and it's the reason why I love these. Uh, the other one I'm planning on modifying slightly since I have two. This one I'm going to keep default. The other one I'm planning on putting the F60 motor Pro V2s because I have those. And I never really got to test them because the propeller disintegrated. But no more propeller disintegrations. That used to ruin all my maidens. So the Hollybro Copus is a really good one. Highly recommended. I'll have it linked down below. It's one of the best BNFs you can purchase. Super smooth. Beautiful right out of the box. Now, 
we have a couple quads. This one here. This one is really unique, if you might say. This is a frog six inch. Frogs don't come in six inch. Um, I had to. I had actually Transtech create six inch arms specially just for me. I sold them all out though, and this is the last pair right here. Now. What's so nice about this? Well, this is using a Dell RC engine and the Dell RC F405 uh, XM Plus radio. This camera I really don't like, but I'm just too lazy to change out. It's the Foxeer Aero. I'm not really liking them that much. They're good, but I just don't like them. Um, so yeah, that's the camera I'm using. VTX, believe it or not, Eishin TX526. This one has been in use for three years, from quad to quad. As you can tell, I've modified it here. To use a little pigtail because I broke the SMA. And it's still working like a champ. Like an unbelievably amazing little champ. So that's a, like a $10 VTX. Which still is recommended by me in terms of longevity and durability. Now everything I talk about also in this video. I'll have it linked in the order down below. So you can kind of go through it. I'll have each quads parts as I go along. Now this VTX is good. I don't know how bad it bleeds to other channels. I never really tested it, but as in distance of around one kilometer, I never really flew more than one kilometers with this, but I get really great reception, even behind trees, even with a little shitty dipolar, it's been great, which is the Eishin TX526. I'll have it linked down below. It's like 10 bucks. Sometimes it goes on sale for $8. Dell RC engine, still a beautiful ESC for 4S setups. Be careful. If you go higher than that, it'll you'll ruin one of the FETs and then you'll start having weird issues. Now, let's talk a little bit about motors. This motor is, there's two motors that stand out in my mind dramatically as my favorite motors, which is the Racer, no, the Emacs uh, Race Spec 2 2206, I think 2700 kV. I'll have it linked down below under my favorite two motors. This motor is so freaking insane that I had to rebuild this quad again just to play with it again because you know I've, I've gotten so many things to do and uh, just recently I just put everything on the side and I've just been rebuilding most of my quads so I rebuilt this to actually test my two favorite motors against each other back to back in the field and um, we're gonna see how well it does so let's put this aside we're gonna see a video of these motors well, this whole setup again coming up very soon now, the, my 7-inch iFlight, which tested the uh, low KV the other day, what did we test? Um, oh, the Emacs Ecos, that's what we tested. However, today I have a different setup. I also, when I got the Re Re Emacs Race Spec 2, I got two, ki I got two KVs. I got uh, the 2306 2400 KV, and that one I think is the 2206 2700 KV. So this one I've never tested. I just put these on uh, this quad right now, which gonna, we're, we're going to be testing. Now, this one here, if you remember, I was using the Xing Motors, the 2206 or 7. Anyways, it was one of those, the 2450 ones. Uh, this was just, the, this video was released like a couple days ago or a week ago. However, today what I found was Racer Star Sporg. 2206 2300 kV motors. Now these come in five pairs, okay? I've tested the other 2207s, don't remember which ones, but they were pretty good. So I'm very curious to see because I know exactly how this thing flies. Uh, so I'm really curious to see how well these are gonna perform. I think it's gonna be really interesting because we can also compare the flight footage and then I could watch the other video and kind of do the same maneuver so we can get an idea of how well these perform. So this is gonna be really interesting. Hopefully they're somewhat efficient. But um, yeah, I'll have them linked down below these also. These come in five. So when you purchase, I think like 30 bucks for five motors. Um, there is no play, which is really nice. I don't have any play on any of these. That's a really good sign. And we're going to see how well this thing performs. And this, is, this thing is a beast if you've missed my channel. This is capable of up to 6S motors, which is low KV motors. I have the newest Holybro stack in there, the Kakute V2 with the ICM gyro and the Racer Star. Oh, sorry. Why do I keep fucking up? The Hollybro Metal 4 in 1 ESC, no capacitor, even on 6S, was just flying absolutely gorgeous. And the Atlatl uh, V2, I think, uh, VTX. But yeah, it's, this is a really nice quadcopter here. I'll have a link to the build and as well as the parts for this one. All right. Now, there's some little uh, beautiful little quadcopter here. As you can tell, this is a split level frame so this is the drone mesh split scene i never really made a full review of it even though it flies really good but again you might think i'm biased towards it but it's really one of the best flying micros i've ever flown and i've actually rebuilt it today because i want to take it out flying again last time it was stuck in a balcony of a school for a while <laughs> and then i just got it back 
So this is a really interesting setup. Now I wanted to put the Ori 32 in here, but that's overkill for 11XX motors. For motors, I'm using the Emacs 1106, not the newer ones, the older ones, the 1106, uh, 7,000 kV, I think, 6,000 kV motors, 2.5 inch quad blade uh, racer star uh, propellers here. These propellers are really good. I don't care what anybody says. They're one of my favorite propellers. They did kind of copy Gemfan, but at the time, Gemfan didn't have 2.5 inch. It only had the one point, uh, the 1.9 inch. And um, Racer Star was the one that was making the 2 inch, so the 2.5 inch. So I just took these. Now, this is pretty interesting. It's using the HGLRC F428 stack. Um, this stack is good, but not for heavy load usage. So this stack is good for something like this. It's connected also via pins, and it's it's a really nice stack for such a build. I've actually burnt one before this just because a little water came in there. However, this one was com completely conformal coated because of that issue. However, this time when I rebuilt it, I made a new addition, actually two new additions. What I was using before was the run cam, uh, this one here with the VTX that's attached to the back. And then I just remembered I never tested the Caddx, and I don't know where the hell to put the Caddx HD one. The turtle or turtlet? I don't know what the hell you're calling it. But yeah, I was able to really squish the living shit out of it up top here since it's a 20 by 20 stack, which is really awesome. I've never really tested it, so this is going to be the first test of this. And for VTX, I was like, what? where the hell am I going to fit a VTX here? Luckily, I have the new uh, Hollybro AT Ladle Mini VTX, which is a 25 milliwatt 100 milliwatt and pit mode vtx here it's really nice what i use is just hot glue i just hot glued it behind the camera there and um yeah this thing was getting seven minutes of flight time before this upgrade now before this upgrade it was with props around 75 grams now it's pushing around 91 grams so there's a 20 gram increase here i'm going to be using the same battery same everything and uh, i'm really curious to see how well this is going to perform and with the HD recording, which is really nice because this thing is so quiet, so smooth. It's the reason for that is because each motor gets really clean air. So it's not really, um, they're not really affecting each other. Plus this is actually a three inch, but I'm choosing to put 2.5 inch. It's kind of the same idea when I get my iFlight XL7. It's a seven inch obviously, but if I put six and five inch props, you can just feel it that it's so much smoother because it, the, the, the propellers are getting much cleaner air because you have more space apart. You will have some weight increase, but not by much. I mean, right now, if I bring in the five inch version of this, which is my ESC tester and weigh them, we're not going to see much difference, maybe 10, 20 grams. So uh, I really like the seven inch here. It's, it's a really nice little beast here. Uh, so, yeah. So this is going to be really interesting. I have no idea what to expect. I tested it in the shop. It's flying. Everything is bound. All the motors spin in the right direction. So yeah, this is going to be a really interesting run. Um, I really missed flying, especially now that the weather is clearing up. Today we had some rain. Luckily, we did have some rain, so I had enough time to do all these. So expect Racer Star Sporg motors, even though that they're old, uh, for review here because I just want to see how they perform now. And as you know, time, everything is matured. So people also have, you know, used them. And now there's a lot more input about them. So we can also see in the comment section once we test this and I'll get a feel between the Shing motors, between these little cheap motors. That's going to be a really interesting setup here. So everything here is on this one is premium except the motors. And for the iFlight, I'm going to be testing out the 2306 race spec Emacs 2400 KV. I'll have them linked down below. They are good, but I noticed one issue. One of the motors would kind of catch while I was spinning it. And under close examination, what I found was, if you take a closer look here, is that, you know, the goo that they use to balance these motors, it was just slightly sticking down. And let me just get it to focus here. Why isn't it focusing? So what I found out is the, the blue goo that they use inside was kind of sticking down slightly and it was hitting against this little part, the heat shrink here. So what you can do is you could use heat, uh, heat gun, uh, you know, hot air, and then push this down. What I did instead was I just got a screwdriver and I just pushed down on this because it was lifting up too high and it was just catching the bell. Now it's all good. I'm also going to be building this in an upcoming video. Uh, I was going to put these F60s on here, but I think I'm going to do something else. And I kind of wasn't paying attention. This is the H, kind of like the Dead Cat style. This is the uh, Gibb RC Mark II. It's a really sexy ass frame, like really nice. 
Um, the aluminum is really great and it has a lot of room, unlike the old Leopard. And it feels a lot lighter. So yeah, this is going to be a really interesting one. I have no idea what to expect or what to build on this just yet. But as time goes on, we will see. And also, 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 I forgot to mention, but I have a video coming on the Turnergy Evolution to take multi-protocol modules. I finally did it. And let me show you. It's not really the cleanest execution just yet. And that's the reason why I didn't upload the video. So what this does is you have an Arduino that will hijack, it wouldn't hijack, it'll um, listen in on the inputs of, you know, the gimbals and the switches here. It'll take them in, convert them to PPM, output them into the multi-protocol module. Now I've designed this little, you know, just, just goes in here. Now, unfortunately this is running, the whole system is running on basically 3.3 volts and, and five volt batteries basically. So what you have to do is you have to incorporate an external two to three S LiPo to give power to the module such as this. Oh, I didn't even notice this has this in it. So that's really nice. Okay. So for example, this would be just really easy. And many of you say, how the hell am I going to bind if I don't see what I'm doing? Well, there's a, look, there's a bind button. Look, there's a bind. There's another bind button here. And to enable this to work, you have to enable PPM mode. And it's in the instructions. I don't remember how, but it's in the instructions. So if you don't know how to do that, try to figure it out. So you just have to enable PPM mode in order for it to work with such a thing here. So I'm pretty sure FR Sky didn't want to make this just proprietary to their FR Sky systems because that would be stupid because not everything in the market is FR Sky. There's some nice Fly Sky stuff. There's some nice other things. So yeah, this is universal. This will work on anything and it'll take PPM. So keep that in mind. And uh, it's going to be really fun to see this fly everything with some sort of a multi protocol module, as you can tell. So yeah, it's going to be pretty good. And this will be upcoming very soon. It works, but I think I burnt the Arduino also. Um, but I'm not sure yet. And but I'll come back to that. But it works. I already flew a quad in here. An FR Sky quadcopter it was actually the Emacs Baby Hawk, the little white one. I forgot the hell it's called that one. So yeah, I was able to fly that one and it worked really great. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll have a link to everything down below. Please check those out. Those really support the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.